Wow, thank you guys so much for the amount of support on my last video. That was insane. Hopefully you enjoy this one. But yeah, just to begin this video, I wanted to say thank you for all the support on the next video. And the expert mode will be coming soon. I don't know if it will be my next video or my next video after that, but it will be coming soon. And as you read in the title, today we are going to be beating Cuphead without jumping once. Now you might be asking yourself, what do you mean, no jumping? If you're asking yourself that, then I, I don't know. The rules for this challenge are very, very simple. Beat the game. <laughs> without jumping. What did he say? I'm doing this in my 300% save file. So I have all access to all charms, all shots. Literally anything in the game, including glitches, that allows me to beat this game without jumping is allowed. And as long as I don't jump, and I beat all of the bosses, then we win. This video took me a really long time, not only to record, but also to edit. So, if you want to leave a like, I'd really appreciate it. And if you really like my channel, consider subscribing. You guys did amazing with the like goal on the last video, so I'm not even setting one for this one because I don't even know what's going to happen. So thank you guys again, and with all of this out of the way, let's get right into the video. And as always, the first boss is the root pack. This boss was extremely easy. Literally all I did was use the smoke charm so I could dash in between the dirt balls that the first potato boss throws at you. And then for the onion boss, I literally didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was dodge the tears that were above me. That's it. It wasn't that hard. And then the carrot, again, wasn't that hard. All I had to do was stay low. Obviously, I can't jump, so I had to stay low. But I basically just used the roundabout shot, so I hit almost all the carrots. I also used the crack shot, so that made it way easier because it hit the carrots almost every single time. So... In the end, this boss wasn't really that difficult. Uh, it was a nice, easy boss to get started in the challenge, but we had a bit of a problem with the next one. Oh, wait. Um. Um. I can't. I can't. I can't get it. <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> no. This was the first boss in the challenge, obviously, because it's the second one, to actually give me a challenge. I had no clue how I was going to beat this, and I died so many times trying to figure it out. I tried Miss Chalice, which didn't work at all. And it was after hours of trying that I stumbled upon the holy grail of this challenge, the Divine Relic. If you don't know what the Divine Relic is, it's a new charm that they added in the DLC and it basically combines every shot in the game, which isn't useful at all. But it also combines almost every single charm in the game, including the two most important charms for this challenge, the Smoke Bomb and the Coffee Charm. The Smoke Bomb gives you an invisible dash that you can dash through objects with, and the coffee charm fills your super meter over time so I didn't have to actually shoot him to build up my super meter. Now you might be wondering why I need to build up my super in the first place if I can't even attack him. And that's because if you use the invincibility super art, you actually get a slight boost and jump into the air, which doesn't actually count as a jump because I never press the jump button. It just shoots me into the air for some reason. I found out this strategy by watching Sample's video on doing the DLC without jumping, so shout out to him. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out after this. And the plan was set. All I had to do was use my invincibility charm to boost me up in the air so I could parry the thing. The only problem was that he has three different attacks that he can do. The snake attack, the tiger attack, and the bull attack. 
The bull attack is easily dodged and the only way I could really do damage. The tiger attack was dodgeable, but I would take damage almost every single time. And the snake attack? That's not even possible. The only problem with this plan is that, in between super uses, I would have to dodge his coins for like two minutes straight, and it got really annoying really quick. What? Bullshit that hit me. But finally, after doing this boss for over an hour, I finally got a run where I was able to knock out. Fuck. Oh. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> if you want to see how I beat all of these bosses, I'm going to leave a full compilation of every single boss fight linked down below in the description so you can watch that if you want. Anyways, we're on to the next boss fight, which is Goopy Legrand. This boss fight is l really easy. You don't even have to jump at all unless you want to get the parries, but other than that, you don't need to jump ever. All I did was use my smoke dash if I ever got any trouble, and that's pretty much it. And we move on to the next boss, which is Hildeberg. And this is a plane level, so I can't even jump. So, plane levels were basically just a walk in the park for me because. I didn't have to worry about anything so they were kind of just like a chill thing that I got to do in between boss fights where I didn't have to worry about whether or not I could actually beat them because I can't jump I'm mostly gonna skip over all of the bosses that didn't really give me a challenge because they're not as interesting as the other ones I'm still gonna show them in the video but I'm not gonna give them as much highlight as the ones which are really hard without jumping because they're just more boring. But anyways, we move on to the final boss of Inkwell Isle 1 which is Cagney Carnation. And it's in this final boss fight where we encounter our second challenge of the challenge which is vegans. Eat your vegetables! I mean, roots. This boss fight didn't just have one problem, it actually had two. The first problem being that it had a move that was completely impossible to dodge, which would just make me retry the match instantly. But it also, during its final phase, I had nothing to do against its roots attack because the roots were on the bottom of the map, and I can't jump, so I couldn't go anywhere. The root problem was easily solved by just using my invincibility power up to boost myself up on top of there and dash in between the platforms so I never had to jump. The other attack, I literally had nothing to do. There's nothing I could do about it because I could never get my invincibility that fast. So I had no choice but to restart my run if I took damage there because I needed all my hearts for the final phase. No, why? I hate you so much. You are my fucking least favorite. Oh. And then he's gonna. I. How did I know that you were gonna? Die? Are you kidding me, bro? I, I struggled a lot, especially during his last phase, because whenever I landed up on top of the platforms, I would just get kicked off because I was trying to dash to the other one, and I would just go through it instead of landing on top of it. And once I was on the floor, I was already dead. And that kept repeating until about an hour of attempts later, I finally got an attempt that actually worked. Let's go, baby! Let's go! That is... Aqua Isle. Oh no. Done. Without jumping. Let's go!
The first boss I decided to do in Inkwell Isle 2 was Varnes von Bonbon. This boss fight was really simple because I didn't really have to go anywhere so I could stay on the floor the entire time. It all depend on what minions she sent out. Every other minion was dodgeable apart from the gumball because he has the smaller gumball that follows behind him. So whenever I would try to dash through I would end up hitting the other gumball. And for her final phase, I used the Divine Relic as well, just in case I needed to use my invincibility to avoid damage. But I could also use the Smoke Dash to dash through other minions, such as the Candy Corn or the Peppermints that she rolls during her final phase. But other than that, it wasn't really that difficult. After a few attempts, we did finish it. Yes, go! And the next boss fight of this challenge is, of course, another plane level. It is, um, it's that guy. Like I said with the Hildeberg boss fight, it's another plane level. It's not that hard. I can't jump. So, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. There we go. I love plane levels. They're so nice. Don't even have to worry about it at all. Yeah, well, now I have something to worry about. This might be a problem. <laughs> now I know this looks like a pretty simple fix. Just use Miss Chalice's dash parry, right? I don't parry them. Hmm. Well done. So, I couldn't dash parry with Miss Chalice. I couldn't jump to parry it with Cuphead or Mugman. I can't take damage or else I'll lose too much health. Um, after a ton of attempts, I finally remembered something. The crack shot. If you don't know what the crack shot is, it's another new weapon added in the DLC. The crack shot itself isn't useful in this situation, but its EX move is really useful. If you don't know, the EX move sends out a planet, which you can actually parry. So if I could get my EX move, I could parry from that to the nose to get up on top of the roller coaster. The only problem is, now I actually have to do what I said I was going to do. And that's not easy. It could potentially happen. It could happen. April, it could. It, it could. <laughs> Don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. After a few attempts, I found a way to have this strategy work every single time. All I had to do was use my crack shot EX move to parry off of that, to parry off the nose of the roller coaster to get on top of the roller coaster. And once I was on the roller coaster, I could use my dodge roll to get past the passengers in the roller coaster. I also found out that during his final phase, I can use the same strategy to get up on top of where you're supposed to be, and then I can just dash in between each platform. Okay, now it's actually possible, I just have to do it. Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> that was so. <laughs> I forgot she can go invincible <laughs> or invincible. <laughs> oh my god, I did it, dude. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny, bro. Oh my god, and we got an A minus. <laughs> All right. What? Oh, I already have bombs. I'm dumb. I, it's not a. <laughs> plane level, let's go. Yep, another plane level. This time it's Wally Warbles. I, 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 I'm running out of things to say for these. I don't, I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a plane. I can't, I can't jump in a plane. Okay. Dude, this challenge is easy. We're, at, we're flying through this. Like, we're gonna get this done in like a couple hours. Like, this is, e this is easy. Oh shit. At first, I tried to do this challenge on simple mode, and I beat it in a few tries using the method of the crack shot EX move and just pairing it to get to each and every cloud. But simple mode doesn't count. Simple mode is dumb, and it doesn't count. So we have to figure out a way to do it on regular mode. And this plan involved our good buddy, the, uh, the genie. Now I know what you're thinking. You didn't use the great wishes, right? I did, but look, look, listen, listen. Go back to the beginning of the video. Go back to the beginning. You remember the rules. Remember what I said. Literally anything in the game including glitches that allows me to beat this game without jumping is allowed. Yeah, anything. Anything in the game. This is in the game, so it counts. I don't care. I spent an hour, maybe more, trying to do this on normal difficulty, and it did not work. I do not care. You want to see? You want to see? Here's a minute and a half compilation of my pain. You're welcome. Oh my god, really? What? Dude, this is I'm fucking pissed off. Needless to say, I was using the wishes. And even after using the wishes, it still took me like two hours. It was not much easier with the wishes, and I don't know how it wasn't, but it was not that much easier. And after hours and hours of trying to beat this boss without jumping, I finally got a run where I only took one hit during the first and second phase and had seven hearts leading into the final phase. So here's the final phase of this fight. My fucking god. <laughs> oh. Ah. Finally, the hardest boss of this challenge is done. What? Even with the 8 HP equipped, I don't think this boss fight is actually possible. 
I tried for so many hours and I could not even get to the third phase. I have no clue if it's possible. I used the same strategy with the crack shot so then I could keep parrying my EX moves. But I couldn't get enough of them oftentimes, so I could just not stay above the platforms. So I just continuously died. If any of you at home want to try and beat this boss and you actually beat it on normal mode, let me know, I'll post the video, and I'll include it at the end of this video because I'll make sure to shout you out because I could not do this and I had to do it on simple mode. I don't know whether or not to count this for the challenge because technically I didn't beat it on normal difficulty, which means technically I can't beat the game, but I'm not sure if there's any other way to beat it that's not on simple difficulty. Like I said before, if you beat it somehow, I need to see how you did it because I don't know how, but I was not able to beat it on normal difficulty, so technically we failed the challenge, but technically we didn't because I don't know if it's possible. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm a bit disappointed that we weren't able to beat one boss on normal mode, but there's nothing I can really say about that, and we're on to the next boss. And the next boss is Captain Brinybeard. This boss was pretty simple because you never actually have to jump through any of his fight. You don't have to jump ever. So I just used the Divine Relic so I could gain my super meter over time just in case I needed to use my invincibility. And also I had the Smoke Charm so I could dash through anything that he shot at me. And yeah, it was a pretty simple fight. And we're on to the next one. This boss was another plane level so I can't jump. The only difficulty that I had with the boss fight was I accidentally equipped the Divine Relic which, if you don't know, is not very useful in plane levels because it switches your weapons from the gun to the bombs all the time. And the bombs are very useful for the Calamaria fight. So that was a bit annoying, but I didn't want to retry the fight, so I just dealt with it, and we're on to the next one. Just misgendered a fucking squid, let's go. Fucking squid! Oh, but... Oh man. We did it! Let's go! Our next boss is Sally Stage Play. This boss fight was going really well. I was able to smoke dash through all of her attacks, and it was looking like it was going to be really easy until this happened. Well, now we have a problem. <laughs> Alright then. Never mind. Luckily, we were somehow able to smoke dash through that, and all I had to do was smoke dash through her umbrella in the final phase, and get lucky with what shot I had, because they're randomized in the Divine Relic, and this boss fight was done. Let's go! And with her out of the way, we were on to another plane level. This time, it's Dr. Cal's robot. Usually, under any other circumstances, this boss fight's pretty hard, but I've been doing so many other bosses that took way longer that I did this first try and it wasn't that difficult. What is a wombo combo? Wombo combo. Hold on. I... <laughs> this isn't even a joke. I completely forgot to add Verna Vermin into the video. I did the boss fight, it was there, I just completely forgot to add it. So my apologies for that, but this boss fight was pretty easy. I ended up just using the divine relic so I could have the smoke dash for when he shoots the bombs down. And apparently, I did not know this, but you don't actually have to use the springs. You can just dash through them in the first time. I did not know this, but you can, you can dash through them apparently. So that was pretty easy, and then during the second phase, I just used my invincibility to get up onto the top floor, and during the last phase, I just had to dodge. It wasn't really that difficult, and yeah. Thank you to everybody who reminded me about this, because I completely forgot to add it in the video. Let's go! <laughs> We're on the fucking ink- Oh no, we still have to do Phantom Express. Fuck. <laughs> And just like that, we're on to the final boss of Inkwell Isle 3, 
and that's the Phantom Express. In my head, this boss fight was going to be really easy, but I kind of forgot about like the most important part of this fight. Oh, fuck. Well, shit. The final phase looks hard, but it's not actually that bad. I just used the same strategy of using the Divine Relic, waiting for my invincibility to fill up, and then using my invincibility to parry. The combination between the flying pumpkins dropping stuff that move the cart, the ghost dropping stuff that moves the cart, and having to dodge attacks while waiting for my super to fill made this boss really, really difficult. Since I was using the Divine Relic, my weapons would switch randomly, so whenever I had a good weapon, it would switch to something like the Chaser, which would automatically chase after the ghosts, and just with my luck, they would almost always hit the cart, so I would move into the way of the electric beam, and I would instantly take damage. So after enough attempts, I never figured out how to do it properly, I just got lucky enough to actually win. Let's go! Oh my god. <laughs> I want to know how long that took. Jeez. Almost seven minutes. <sighs> and with the Phantom Express finally done, we go on to Inkwell Hell to fight the final two bosses of the challenge. The mic's over here. This is the second to last boss of the challenge, King Dice. And before I did this boss fight, I thought of which bosses which would be the easiest to verse. I settled upon the first boss being the chips, the poker chips, because I knew all I had to do was dash in between. I could have done the alcohol dudes, but there's the third one that has that spill attack that's I think would be impossible to dodge, I'm not 100% sure. And then it would also be really difficult to do the cigarette because I can't go anywhere because I can't jump. Now we need a three. Or... No, I should take the plane level. Why would I take the... the fuck? And the second one I chose was the plane level because it's a plane level and I don't have to jump in that, so why not? And the final one I chose was the 8-ball, because it's the one that I find the easiest. I could have done level 9, which was the plane level as well. But I find that one a bit more hard, so I didn't want to do that one, so I did 8 instead. And then, with those three defeated, we were on to the boss fight. Give me a 2. Okay, you know I, I did that on purpose. Uh, I was I was keeping you on your toes. Um, okay, now we're on to the boss fight. This boss was actually pretty easy because if you didn't know, you can actually stick behind his hands to avoid damage. So I never actually had to jump up onto the cards. And the only problem that I had with this was because sometimes he does the same hand each time. So and I can't jump, so I had no way to actually parry the cards. So, if he did do the same hand, then I would have to take damage, but I got pretty lucky, and he did get it done. Let's go! Let's go, baby. Come on. And just like that, we are on to the final boss of this challenge, the devil. <laughs> Perfect. Another unavoidable attack. Cool. 
this boss was probably the second hardest in the game, mainly due to RNG, because I had to get lucky with what attacks he did, because some of them I just can't dodge. And also, during his final phases, when you're down below, I it's really hard to do stuff there, because I have nowhere to go. So I had to use the Crackshot EX move to parry in between platforms, even when they were falling, so I would avoid damage. And if you thought the pain compilation was bad for Grim Matchstick, I got one better for you. Oh fuck. No, stop it. I knew it was gonna do it again. I fucking knew it. I can't. <laughs> like, obviously you can do it, but it. I don't understand how to not do it. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I just want to beat this and jump for once. I just want to jump. Like, please, bro. Get hit by that. <laughs> Dancer is nowhere. Man, at least I can have my meatballs. Stop giving me this one, bro. I hate you. A great slam at this. You're actually a fucking banana. Bro. <laughs> I knew he was gonna do it. I knew it. I felt it. I was like, he's gonna fuck that dude. He's out of his face. You can tell because the purple guy. Purple guy! Purple guy! All there is is pain. <laughs> I thought we said I don't fucking do that. Uh, play that clip of the one dude that's snoring. I love that I'm playing this I love that I'm playing My favorite fucking thing on the planet. Three in a row, baby. Let's go for four. Let's go! How about five? Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. <laughs> but finally, after, I'm not joking, two hours of attempts, I finally beat this boss. I'm I'm so done. <laughs> I can't even be happy, dude. Uh. And just like that, we had done it. The game was technically beaten without jumping. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and thank you guys so much for the support recently on the channel. I've been having such a fun time making videos, and I hope you're having fun watching them. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.